tēnā koe te katoa. E honore, he kororea, hariruia, ki te atua e irunga rawa. Mau ngā rongo ki tōna iwi ki runga ki te mato o te whenua, he whakaaro pai ki ngā tanga te katoa. Kia tau tonu ngā manaki tanga, a kia tātou tēne iahi ahi. Kia ino ai tātou ki te ingo te matua te tamaiti me te wairu a tapu a mene. E pae e tō matau matau nui te rangi, te tiro iho kia matau i tēne wā me whakatikai ngā matau mahi katoa, ko koe hoki kei te tia ki tonu kia matau. E waka wetai waka moimiti atu ki a koe ki a koutou te toko i tūru tapu i te hunga tapu katoa, mō koutou nei manaki tanga kūhia nei ki tēna ki tēna o matau. Waka ungia nei matau e pā, te wairua tapu i o matau ake ngākau, kia tūturu pūmau i ngā āhua tanga, o tau tamokotahi tō mātou kai whakaora a kia mātou. Kia manaki tonu ki tēnei kaupapa o mātou i tēnei rā, me ngā kai kōrero. O reira ka tuko atu e nei inoenga, i rotu i te kroria tanga, o tō mātou kai whakaora e hū, kraiti o te mātou ariki. Āmene. O te mātua, te mauti, me te wairua tāpū. Āmene. E tātou mā. E ngā puhi nui tonu, e te tai toke rau, e ngā whanaunga, e ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā tapu puta noa i te nuku roa o Aotearoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Ka mihi ka tika ki a rātou kua mene atu ki te pō, e ngā mate huhu o te wā, ngā mate o i a marae o i a marae, Puta noa te tai toke rau, ngā puhi nui tonu, a ki runga ki a Aotearoa nui tonu anu hoki. Hei re koutou, hei re koutou, hei re koutou, a whakaoti atura. A kāti te wahanga, a ki a rātou, te hei re ki te kainga tuturu mo te tangata, Hawaii ki nui, Hawaii ki roa, Hawaii ki pama mao, te hono i wairua ki te whaiao ki te amarama, Hawaii ki whakamutu, nō reira e ngā mate haere. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. It's my pleasure once again to introduce this kaupapa for Toing Apuhi, the fourth in this series and our final for this part of the year. The success of our interactions with kai kōrero from ngā puhi nui tonu and Te Tai Tokero uh, has been encouraging for us to look at how we expand our reach and our advocacy for creatives who live in Te Tai Tokero, Apuhi Noi Tonu, and also those uh, of our people who live in other, other parts of the country. Uh, our first introduction was with Te Warahi Hetaraka, and he introduced his uh, perspective and experience into Whakairo. And then we spoke with Phil Wihongi about modern aspects of urban design. And last week, we heard from Graham Tipene about his experience as a, uh, a kaita for Taiamoko and also one who wears the Moko Mataora. Today, we have a great experience to relive the times uh, of recent times of contemporary Taitokero and Ngāpuhi Nui Tonu artists. And I'd like to introduce today uh, Kura Tewaru Rewiri, who I'm sure everyone will agree with me as one of those senior artists for tai, uh, Te Taitokero and Ngāpuhi Nui Tonu. It's very fitting for her to introduce our guest speaker today. And as we cross now to Kura, I'd like to say um, tēnā koe Kura, and also as you begin to give our special thanks to those who are behind the scenes for our final uh, kaupapa today. Tauru Eruera, who's been doing uh, work tirelessly in behind the scenes. Of course, there's our um, honorary Taitokero person, Bridget Riddle, in Te Waipaunamu. And of course, Francis and the team at Auckland Live who have supported us greatly. But now, let's cross to you, Kura, 
and you can introduce the kaupapa for today and our guest speaker. Tēnā koe, tēnā koutou. Kia ora hui hui mai anō rātātou. Kia ora, Bernard. Kura. A tēnā koutou katoa, he mihi whānui tēnei, kia tātou katoa i raro i te kaupapa tua whā, o toi Ngāpuhi, uh, kei a koe Bernard i te uh, haka tūwhera uh, i te kaupapa o te rā nei, ngā mihi kia koe, uh, kia tātou katoa o te hapuri, ngā mihi. Uh, kā mihi e te mātahi o te tau. Uh, ai, ko kura te waririwiri tōku ingoa, nō whangaroa hau. Uh, kei papa o ia e noho ana hau i tēnei wā, kei te kūninga ki pūrehu roa um, uh, e mahi ana a hau. Uh, uh, nō reira, tēnā kei te katoa. Um, a me huri au ki te manuhiri o te rā, uh, ko Nigel Borel. Um, uh, Nigel, has, I've had a long friendship with uh, Nigel and I'm happy uh, that he has agreed to join us in this kaupapa in honouring and um, our heroes of Toi Ngāpuhi and the, at the beginnings of the contemporary Māori uh, visual arts movement and uh, together we'll have a conversation. No, no reira, um, um, me hoa te te rāka e kia, kia koe Nigel, um, ko wai koe, no hea koe, e hatou mahi. Mm -hmm. Kia ora kura. Uh, ngā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Uh, it, um, it's a pleasure to be with you all and to be sharing in this kaupapa. Uh, ko Nigel Barella hau, nō no tauranga moana au, uh, ko ngai te rangi, ngā te rangi nui, te whakatoa hia me te rāroa oku iwi, uh, ko pe peri rākau te hapu, ko paparo te marae, ko wirihi ko te rangatira. Uh, nō reira, tēnā rākau tau katoa. Uh, kia ora, Nigel. Um, today we, uh, we're really happy to have Nigel with us. Um, his curator, Māori, at uh, Tūtamaki, Auckland Art Gallery, um, probably the most prestigious public art gallery in the country. Um, and Nigel has um, lots of responsibility in reflecting back to the community. Ngā mahi toi o ngā Māori uh, o te motu, mai um, uh, Nigel and I will have a conversation um, uh, and trace uh, and, and reflect on uh, the um, the history, well, on our heroes, actually, on our heroes, uh, my Dano, to today. Uh, no data, um, Nigel, if you, Nigel is going to do a presentation and we will um, be talking backwards and forwards to each other and keeping the conversation uh, fluid mm. and interactive. Um, Requeer. Sure done. Kia ora, kura. Um, like I say, it's it's really exciting to be able to talk with you all about our heroes and this broad kaupapa for today. It made me think about, oh, where do we go with heroes? And because, you know, for us, they reside in so many places in our lives and in our, our journeys, whether that's our art journey or our matauranga Māori journey or just our life journey in, in general. Um, those heroes don't distinguish from one from one path to the other. So I suppose for me, I start with my heroes when I think about heroes and those would be my parents. And for me, my parents were my first teachers and they were the ones that um, got me excited about a path, about a career, about what I was interested in. And um, to me, my, my parents are my heroes because they were the ones that taught me to look at the path that spoke to me. And to me, it was being an artist. And I think, um, you know, that that pursuit of matauranga Māori within the visual arts really sums up that path, but also the thing that the speakers and the artists that we're going to look at today, that's the thing they all have in common, is that the visual arts, matauranga Māori within the visual arts, was their, um, was their sustenance, was the thing that brought them their identity 
their strength and their ability to share and and to contribute to to their uh, their culture. And so for me, um, yeah, you know, this this idea of realizing who the heroes are and where they reside is a really fascinating exercise. And for me, I wanted to look at heroes um, in a much broader sense because I feel like we all we're all um, very much guilty of heroic acts in every day in our different disciplines and in our, our different job vacations. Um, so we're all heroes in that regard, and we all um, have to step up when it comes to having to advocate or look at adversity and challenges within our different um, jobs. So hopefully you can see the hero in yourself and in the, in the people that we talk about today and that we highlight in terms of that path. So we'll, we'll start the presentation. Um, and what I wanted to do was just start by talking about, we're gonna do a, put a focus particularly on the rise of contemporary Māori art and the contemporary Māori art movement, just to give some context to the last 70 years of Māori visual arts. And for a lot of that, um, that turning point, if you like, comes in the 1950s, and it comes under a man called Gordon Tovey. And Gordon Tovey um, had this initiative to want to see Māori arts taught in primary schools and secondary schools throughout the country. Gordon Tovey had this idea that Māori art was the unique visual language of this country, and as such, it needed to take pride of place in our education and our learning. It just so happened in the far north, he wasn't getting much traction with his initiatives in terms of presenting uh, arts in general to um, as, as, a, as a curriculum and as a, a secondary school and a primary school way of in, integrating uh, arts education. And so in the far north, he decided to actually um, shoulder tap five young Māori arts advisors to be uh, deciled in different primary schools in the far north to trial a, a thing called the Northland Māori Art Project. And this started in 1954. And the, the five Māori art specialists that he chose were Ralph Hōtere, Katerina Mataira, Muru Walters, Arnold Wilson, and Selwyn Wilson. And really their job was to trial this new idea of teaching the customary Māori art forms to primary school students in different um, primary schools in the far north. And it was a huge success. It was a huge success. And that trial, that pilot ended up becoming uh, practiced up and down the country in the years that followed. And, you know, today we often talk about the, the Tovey generation and that moment in time as being a watershed moment for, for Māori arts and Māori arts education. And partly um, it's a watershed moment because um, not only were Māori, these young Māori in front of their own people teaching them and reintroducing them to their arts, um, whakapapa and customary arts disciplines, um, they were also the visible face to that. And they were also artists themselves. So. The idea that they were educators and artists went hand in hand. And um, this is where the beginnings of contemporary Māori art occurs. And people such as Arnold Manaki Wilson, Muru Walters, Selwyn Wilson, Katerina Mataira and Ralph Hōtere, uh, really this is, this is the beginnings of them seeing themselves as, as artists as, along with as educators. I think it's really interesting that um, when someone's a good artist doesn't mean necessarily that they um, are a great teacher. <laughs> and so it's no surprise that some of those um, teachers ended up becoming, uh, putting the energies into their art practice and into their art career as opposed to teaching. And, um, you know, uh, everyone has a role to play in terms of that Māori arts development. Some were better teachers and mentors and others were better advocates and heroes as being visual artists, and we had the mix within that first group. 
and also, um, Nigel, the last night I, I had a, a, a catch up on Marilyn Webb, and uh, she lives in Dunedin and she fucker puppets to the Pickerings in the north. Yeah. Anyway, I, I caught up with her to let her know that we were going to be um, doing this webinar, but she's very low tech. She so doesn't have a, a mobile phone or anything like that. But she did she did talk to me about um, the experiences in the north and uh, and um, it was really important to uh, keep that connection with, with someone like Marilyn because she's yeah. a printmaker and a painter and she taught for a long time at the Otago Polytechnic and is now a um, emeritus professor uh, to Otago University. So yeah. I think that's a title. Um, and uh, but also, I just wanted to pop in here and say something like, you know, I feel like I I, I grew up with this movement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was going on with the Gordon Tovey lot? And I went to school in Paihia. We had a Māori um, principal. Oh, hang on, no, we had the first principal was uh, Patty Sutherland and then um, Bill Matheson, who who um, no doubt had been um, aware of the Tovey um, initiative in the north and he pulled out this uh, big, big, uh, well, it looked like a big piece of tōtara and he gave it to me to go and carve in the wood <laughs> and, uh, and I came out with this um, this. Uh, this carving um, three-dimensional painted orange, <laughs> you know, and I mean, you know, as, as, a, as a tamariki at that time, I wasn't really aware of what was uh, the initiative and the impact of that initiative, but it was interesting because um, there obviously was some awareness in the schools, at, uh, in, in the primary schools anyway, so that was good to be part of that. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I think um, I think it's always amazing when we talk about the history to realise that it's a living history and that people connect to that history and that it's um, it's a fucker papa in itself. Mm. And it's it's always amazing when we see people's place within that history and how that influences actually helps shape their own journey. So. Um, you know, people like Jonathan Manifiorki is also part of that story and that yeah. history. And we will hopefully touch on, on his contribution a little bit later as well. I think what's, what's also interesting is that, um, you know, this is happening in the north. This isn't happening anywhere else in the country. It's happening in the north. Mm. So we, should, we, we need to just take cognizance and uh, ownership of that, that this amazing initiative where contemporary Māori art turns a page or becomes comes into being is really a Northland story and a Northland history. Mm. I want to just touch, when we talk about history and the place of uh, contemporary Māori art, uh, this woman here is, is um, a hugely significant figure. And I'm talking about Pauline Yebri, uh, who was a Bloomfield. And she went to Elam Art School in Auckland at the tender age of 14 in 1943. And she was the first Māori to graduate with a fine arts diploma in 1946. And this little um, fact has not been well shared or known or understood. And I think often we, um, you know, we've, we, haven't, we haven't shone a light on, on Pauline's contribution um, perhaps because it was such an early, she was such an early forerunner that it's not that widely known. But um, nonetheless, her work is very significant and her, her art practice is very recognisable. And, of course, uh, yes, go for that. Oh. <laughs> Say that again, Kura. It comes from Matodi Bay. Matodi Bay, yeah. yeah. Yes, so... um. She also stayed at Elam after she graduated and um, was teaching there until 1949. So she was a part-time teacher and tutor at Elam um, at a time when, I mean, if we think about 1949 and 1943, um, what an amazing achievement for this woman to be, to be so active and so proactive and so achieving so well within that space. So I think... Um, 
her contribution um, is is one that we need to think about. And she was born in 1927. She passed away in 1977. So she was the same age as Selwyn Wilson. Um, yet Selwyn Wilson came um, to art school nearly 10 years later. And I suppose like anything for those early forerunners that were going to art school, um, looking at their Māori heritage while they were at art school wasn't, wasn't something that was uh, promoted. And it wasn't something that was encouraged, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. for a lot of them, it's not till they leave art school that they actually get a chance to explore their Māori tanga and their uh, identity visually through their art practice. And Pauline Yebri was one of those artists. Selwyn Wilson was another. And Arnold Manaki Wilson talks quite candidly um, about the fact that he was discouraged from looking at his Māori tanga until he left Elam Art School. So I thought that was quite an interesting thing to think about, is that these early forerunners, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the importance of their, their heritage, their mātauranga Māori, it still came through, but it came through once they had a chance to dictate and to uh, present the works that they wanted to present and the corridor that they wanted to present. I also have a quick quote from um, Cliff Whiting back in 2015, where he says, Pauline Yebri was one of the very first Māori artists, contemporary Māori artists, to incorporate Māori creation narratives within her artwork. Um, and so even Cliff, and living in Russell at that time, of course, um, Pauline Yebri's, um, her, her career and her contribution was known to, to them and to her peers. And then we have um, Selwyn Wilson. And I just wanted to touch on Selwyn because when we think about the whakapapa of teaching um, and the contribution that artists make as educators, Selwyn Wilson is, is definitely one of those forerunners and one of those um, esteemed, um, gifted, talented people that came to the fore at the very beginning. And so Selwyn Wilson went to Elam Art School um, and was the first Māori male to graduate from Elam in 1952. So if you think about it, Pauline was there nearly 10 years earlier, and then uh, Selwyn Wilson uh, comes through and achieves uh, stunningly well in his time. And in that slide you'll see I've taken a quick clip from the Northern Advocate um, newspaper in 1948, which proudly highlighted the fact that um, Selwyn Wilson's first artwork um, was bought by the Auckland Art Gallery in 1948. Oh. And it's this work here, which is a study of a head. And this is the first contemporary Māori artwork to be uh, acquired by any art institution in the country. And um, if you want, we can, we can claim this as the first contemporary Māori artwork to make its way into an art institution or into an institution's collection. And that's quite significant. You know, that's, that's something to think about because when we think about an artwork making its way into a collection, it makes its way into our art histories. And this is what's happening here with Selwyn's um, portrait of a head. Uh, it was a work that won first place um, in a recent competition at Elam Art School. And then it was quickly picked up and purchased by the Auckland Art Gallery that same year. So he went on to be um, collected a, a, a few other works several years later. But I think it's fascinating that uh, Selwyn's work made such an impression quite early on in our story, in our art, contemporary Māori art story. I think it's also important that, you know, we're starting to see art schools such as Elam and Ilam, art institutions such as the Auckland Art Gallery, um, being infiltrated by Māori and our ideas and uh, us occupying that space. So when you think about Māori and the big urban shift of the 1940s and 50s, to think that someone like Selwyn is also, and, and Pauling, are also engaging in those spaces um, that are predominantly Pākehā, that are predominantly uh, European-centric, 
and still um, presenting their ideas and their own voice in those challenging circumstances is really quite a feat and something that we should celebrate and be mindful of today. Um, yeah. And Selwyn also, um, as a secondary school art teacher, had a big influence on the students and um, like Buck Nin, Alan Weehungi, Ben Pittman, uh, myself and, and a few others, you know. So they were very instrumental in um, picking up uh, the talented um ones coming through the education system and so you know the mentorship from Selwyn to Buck to um, Alan to Ben is con is continued it's in continuum so you know that's that's important to um, acknowledge I think with, with um, Selwyn and his presence at Northland College was felt every day when I was a student there in the 60s and and I saw I think I was there at the time when it was uh, Alan was a senior student uh, but then he had previously been the Ducks of Northland College so you know we've had quite a strong presence in the north during uh, that the earlier decades the 50s 60s and 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 onwards yeah fascinating mm. I think too, Kura, I love the way that, um, you know, when we talk about some of these ideas, they come to life through our lived experience and our, the whakapapa of, um, of those experiences and those relationships. So I think those are sort of just untouchable and mm -hmm. they, they're things that we shouldn't lose sight of when we think about the histories, that they are living histories that reside with people that are still with us today. Yeah. And if we if we dare to seek them out, they're there for us to uncover and to unearth and to celebrate. So um, yeah, I think it's if anything, it's a chance to to be reminded of that fucker papa and its importance. And I think it's also important too, um, because it, 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 uh, there's there's a model. There's a model there for the future, you know, for our future generations, our taiohi. Uh, mm. young ones um, you know know that the north is is rich in its uh, mahi toy and um, I think that it's important that uh, we all start talking about it now eh? sharing oh, yeah. it That's you know, right. sharing it because there's lots of things happening in the north um, right now yeah um, but I think to reflect on how we got there is yeah. really important it just it strengthens the kopapa. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I feel like um, you know we're not we're not always good at celebrating it, and I think um, you know part of celebrating it is owning it, owning your history, mm -hmm. and owning the place and the importance of it. And um, you know sometimes we need to be more practiced at that. And uh, you know I think we're quite humble people that just get head down and let's get on with it. And and there's yeah. something to be said for that approach, but. Um, we do need to pull our heads up now and then and celebrate the yeah. amazing achievements and, and uh, contributions that we're part of. Because it's so diverse as well, you know, with all the yeah. uh, developments in uh, uku, yeah. you know, uh, digital media, oh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. We're very um, averse to picking up on things that actually um, probably are tools that enhance the way that we, we think that uh, that we make you know that we can adapt very quickly to this sort of way of presenting to the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, during COVID nineteen, it was yeah. very. I could see the strength of Māori them actually yeah. taking up the the uh, and yeah. um, opportunities. Yeah. Opportunities. Yeah, I agree. I think we forget our own resilience. You know, and these these mm -hmm. moments remind us of our resilience and. <clears throat> the little speed bump that is COVID nineteen is sort of nothing in in the scheme of the resilience that we that we hold yeah. and the fortitude that Māori people hold. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to um, jump forward to a couple of other recent heroes just to give just to give some bookend context to um, just the significance of 
the art figures and the art matauranga Māori that um, exist in this contemporary art space. And that is someone such as Shane Cotton. Of course, um, you know, came, came through art school into prominence in the early 1990s as part of a wave of art school trained Māori who were really um, presenting a very bicultural view of the world and their practice. But I think, you know, uh, amongst that idea of being a bicultural advocate, um, the strength of their own whakapapa to the north um, and their connection to the north um, can be sometimes felt as a, um, uh, what's the word, um, a compromise to the voice. But um, I don't see it that way. I see I see their contribution to a, to a Ngāpohi uh, aesthetic, to a Ngāpohi mātauranga Māori art history, as being very central and very important. And Shane Cotton to me is one of those artists. I think, you know, when we talk about celebrating and seeing our artists, um, sometimes we also need to, to just acknowledge the achievements that our artists are, are making and gaining within the mainstream. And I suppose Shane Cotton's contribution as a contemporary artist, a painter, and one of, one of New Zealand's most successful painters, um, is, is something that we need to to own again and celebrate. Mm. Um, and it also goes to his his teaching career. He made a strong contribution to the Bachelor of Māori Visual Arts program, the Toyoho Kiapati program at Massey University throughout the, the mid-90s for at least um, 10 to 15 years of, of that contribution and being an Arts Foundation Laureate in 2008. So being acknowledged nationally for his contribution uh, and, it's, and it's his art practice, I think is something that is really important for us to own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we think about toying up with he and our future directions, um, we need to take everyone with us when, we, when we're on that journey. And we need to own our heroes and um, make sure that they're part of our the lexicon of how we see our future. Well, you see him alongside of um, Ralph Portetti um, as an icon of the um, arts in, in New Zealand and uh, the, the impact of the, um, their output was, made, was phenomenal, really, because mm. they made a commitment to, um, well, Ralph made a commitment to doing his art and um, surviving that way and being very interactive and proactive with the fact that he wanted to be an artist, mm, mm, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, and because uh, Shane continues that, um, uh, that uh, was it a tradition? That mm. not with, continues with, on with that mahi. And uh, mm. my hat goes off to Shane. Yeah, yeah. Up and Russell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back in the north. So, um, yeah. I mean, you know, some of these things speak for themselves yeah. as well. Uh, his commitment and his, his connection to the north is there. I should mention I did have a good time teaching with Shane here at, um, at uh, Toy Hall Kiapati because we were the painters. So, <laughs> so we had little challenges with our friend here. <laughs> yeah, with the sculptors of this world. Oh, uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, I also want to highlight a, a, a formidable a wahine artist and pioneer in Lisa Rehana. Mm -hmm. um, again, of, of the same generation as Shane, but perhaps um, cut a different path and her, her uh, ascendancy um, is to, to prominence has been very different to the males. Um, for a range of reasons, I believe. But nonetheless, uh, Lisa's contribution as a Māori moving image pioneer across the board is undoubted. Um, she came through art school, Elam Art School, at an early time when um, looking at new technologies, intermedia, video work, um, was, was very much a, a new medium. And, of course, as techno technology grows, that become digital media, and um, it really became 
um, limitless. It was based on the technology and what the technology could offer you at any given time. And Lisa was a very innovative, very courageous, and very um, of, of the here and now and wanted to make stories mm -hmm. of the past uh, and the present but using the technologies and the information available to her at any given time. And I just find her extremely um, a powerful artist for, for being able to harness that ability to see that strength and to, um, to make sense of it in her art practice mm -hmm. and for us all. And I think, you know, her, her practice... Um, turned a real amazing, powerful corner when she did Digital, digital Marae, um, that series of works that uh, started in 2001 and then carried on for at least 10 years after that, um, which looked at the role of Māori women within our narratives and brought prominence back to, to a mana, mana wahine um, uh, gaze, if you like, or worldview or mm. woman's view on the world. Um, and I think it sits within a whakapapa of um, our Manawahini Māori artists who have been long looking at that um, that territory and presenting what a Māori woman's voice might mean and represent within contemporary Māori art. Alongside of her with the um, moving images, Rachel Whakina, uh, Ngā Pohi uh, Kaitahu. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean... Um, for me, um, for me, I'm looking at a, a a new expression, a new visual expression, but it, it's uh, empowering um, also to see how the how the images um, assist uh, the um, kaupapa for before um, mana wahine mm. and what they're working with, mm. and um, I know with Lisa, Lisa's very committed. Mm. Uh, Lisa's made, and, 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 and so it's Rachel, you know, they've made a big commitment to this new um, art form that um, New Zealand is really only just starting to uh, feel um, or get close to. Mm, mm. Yeah, so um, very innovative. Mm. Mm. I must say I was lucky enough to go to Venice in 2017 when uh, Lisa represented New Zealand at the Venice Biennial. And her project was outstandingly strong. Um, it was it was within all the top 10 reviews of um, the different critics from around the world that all descend on Venice for the Biennial. It made all the reviews. It, it, it was really, well, it was so strongly celebrated across the globe. And that work in pursuit of Venus infected um, is traveling the globe and it continues to travel at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Lisa has used it as a springboard for that next um, chapter in her career mm -hmm. and done it, I think, in the the um, most successful way of all the um, the Venus presentations. I feel hers is, um, it has continued to grow and grow with momentum. I want to just turn our attention to another moment in time that is extremely important for the development of uh, Ngāpuhi arts and artists, and that is the formation and the inaugural hui of the Māori Artists and Writers Society in 1973 in Te Kaha. And I remember being introduced to this, the importance of this um, hui through kura when I was a student at Massey University in the late 90s, and Kura would talk firsthand about the importance of this hui and what it did and why, why they met. And uh, it was fascinating to me as a young student to know more about this moment in time and this movement. And um, I think I'll let Kura just tell us a little bit more. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, during that time, I was one of the few uh, Māori uh, at art schools and uh, Buckden had um, planned everything for me and sent me to Islam and um, it was during that time in the early 70s that we got together as um, uh, Māori students 
as well as artists uh, all over the country. And we all congregated um, at uh, Tikaha and um, during Queen's birthday weekend. And it was um, the beautiful thing was that it was a very diverse um, um, presentation of where we were at as the people in the arts. And we had um, a concert piano in the Fuddy, which was played by, like, oh, we. Wadi Wadi Aho uh, Te Ingwa uh, Ivan, Ivan we, we Pera, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> that was fantastic. And we had, um, uh, oh, we had uh, Ralph Hotere, uh, Hone Tufare, uh, Paramecha, you know, all up, uh, Marilyn Webb, uh, Ngahu Yate Awe Kochaku, all, all these people came together, Manos, Manos Nathan, um, it was a lot of people, you know, and we we shared our um, experiences right at, uh, from the marae to the school, uh, which uh, Bill Tafway at the time was principal of the school, and we used utilised the school uh, for our workshops. And uh, unbeknown to us at the time, this was to be a really important event in the history of, of our developments because we took ourselves back to our marae mm -hmm. and we were all inclusive. So we weren't um, just painters or sculptors, we were weavers, we were carvers, we were whaikōrero experts or kaiwaiata. All that, all that, all, all that we had to offer came together at that time, and it was um, it was instrumental in um, setting uh, setting up Ngapuna Waihanga, mm. which uh, Manos and Colleen Illick were very um, active, mm. especially well in the well all the way round, mm. and uh, during. It actually probably um, spurred on the uh, brought the attention to Kiri Two Arts Council, I think, to look at um, how Kiri Two Arts Council would be serving this community of artists. And um, so, in the nineteen eighties, um, you know, um, we had the Māori um, Arts and South Pacific Arts Council, a uh, pretty shasha was there. And um, and so, you know, it, it, what it did, it, it actually prompted all these things that needed to be put in place yeah. so that um, today we have the support that um, uh, artists need uh, from government funding. And then we've got um, artists making sure that they keep focused on their connections to their whakapapa, to their yeah. marae, to their hapu, to their iwi, all that, yeah. um, all that sort of thing. But it was a wonderful occasion to be in. And we had, oh, I'm trying to remember, um, Sunny Wadu doing the wedo coming up the, the um, paddock, yeah. <laughs> tummy iti. We had all the Ngātama Tōr people were there too, like myself. And... Um, and uh, all the radical students that we had right, right from the Dunedin up to um, Auckland University. So it was a very proactive time, you know, so, yeah. um, for us. And uh, yeah, I hope that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and I think the amazing thing to think is that it was artist led. So it wasn't like, um, mm. it was really led by the artist, this initiative to meet, to who he, and yeah. to, to demand change in the way in which funding was divvied up by QE2. Yeah. Um, to me, that's fascinating because, you know, we often think about change as being someone else's agenda that we will benefit from. But, you know, I think this moment in time today and then reflecting on this moment back in 1973, it reminds us that the only way that these agendas change is if, we get up and ask and demand for that change. Yeah. And um, that's how the QE2 Arts Council initiated MASPAC. And mm. if it wasn't for the pressure of groups such as the Māori Artists and Writers Society and Ngā Tamatoa, 
in some of those gangs just would not have occurred. Yeah, and of course there was a lot of leadership that came from the north for those um, uh, initiatives too with um, Elizabeth Ellis and mm -hmm. you know, Elizabeth is still there with um, Haerewa, very proactive mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and now we've gone full circle, so you know, we've gone back to unitary governance, so we have mm -hmm. to look at what our relationships are going to be in terms of, say, Tori Ngāpuhi with uh, Creative New, New Zealand or, mm. yeah. yeah. That's ongoing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I want to just turn our attention to um, another really significant moment and um, Ngāpuhi's involvement in that moment, and that's the formation of Ngā Kaihanga Uku, the, Māori, the National Māori Clay Workers uh, Collective. And of course, co-founded by Manos Nathan, the late Manos Nathan, and Bay Riddell. Um, to me, this is this is an amazing moment in our contemporary Māori art history, for a couple of reasons. Um, again, it's an, it's initiated by the artists, and the artists saying what's important, what the agenda is for contemporary Māori art, but also making connection back to a um, a faka papa of making. Um, that while, you know, there is no um, historical customary template to talk about um, clay making, we do know that there is a whakapapa, in our whakapapa charts, clay and the formation of clay into a hard state is noted in those whakapapa and uh, that mātauranga Māori. So in a way, you know, the, the blueprint for the clay Makers Collective Ngā Kaiangoku is there in our whakapapa of um, of um, materials and the way in which we talk about uku. And I think the other thing to think about is, you know, that this this creates a whole new fabric, a whole new moment within contemporary Māori art, which flourishes in the late eighties and into the the nineties and the two thousands and to today. Um, there is a whakapapa of clay artists which that which comes out of the nurture and support of Ngā Kaihanga Uku. So mm. I just wanted to make mention and, and include that in this all as important. And um, also, Nigel, yeah. the importance of Manawahine in the Uku um, arena with the Taitukuro Uku artists, you know, Sabina yeah. Drake, um, uh, Dorothy Waitford, Absolutely. And um, a few others. And of course, I'm, I'm just forgetting names. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are, there are many um, yeah. yeah, successive waves of contribution, which is so exciting to see. Mm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that um, as well. We'll touch on that shortly. I just wanted to talk about, I know Kura mentioned this, but when we think about these heroes um, of, of Ngāpuhi Arts, um, in arts education, um, there is definitely a whakapapa there. And we, we, in this particular slide, we just wanted to show you in a very didactic but a very literal way. And, you know, you you might be watching this and listening to this and be part of that whakapapa too, being taught by one of these people and then being a teacher yourself. Um, but this just shows you in a very simple way that we're all related to this movement of uh, Māori arts education and a whakapapa to the north and I just want to let Kura reflect on this whakapapa that she knows so well. Okay, I hope I don't forget. <laughs> uh, well, um, well, in the north I think that the, it's really important to acknowledge our, our teachers in the art, uh, in, in arts and secondary schools especially and um, I harken back to um, Selwyn Wilson and uh, his contribution and uh, mentorship of a few of us um, and uh, how he mentored my mentor who sent me <laughs> off to art school. And he, he actually, Buckman was my mentor when I went to Balbans College. He had it all planned for me and I knew not where I was going. Um, <laughs> And uh, he en enrolled me and set me up in a Presbyterian girls' hostel to be be safe and fed in, in Christchurch. 
uh, he decided that I should go to Ireland because he said I was a painter. So <laughs> off I went to Ireland. And then um, um, I think the important thing to remember is that our, our, our art teachers, when they, when they see um, what's in front of them, and I talk about myself as well, we, we see the potential of our, our, our ones coming through. And of course, I've been very privileged to be part of the um, initiative that I'm in now with Toyo Hokiapiti. And um, I've seen how um, mentorship um, is received mm. and how it's uh, applied in, in mm. one's life. So for me, um, Bapnin was um, really important because I probably would have stayed home and... <laughs> not done anything with my life. <laughs> um, and uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gone away overseas to the South Island to to um, be mentored also by all these expatriates mm. people who were, were fantastic painters and drawers and designers. And I formed a relationship with Don Peebles, a friendship, um, mm. And Don people helped me in a difficult time to get home to my farm while I was a student. Mm. They um, uh, cut a long story short. Don Peoples was a great rugby um, fanatic, and if if, uh, if I met him in the, I met him in the um, uh, a while after I left art school, and he tried to trip me up because he found out I did tai chi. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the corridor was that um, he he was adamant that the All Blacks were the best in the world, and <laughs> I agreed with him just in case he was going to trip me up. But um, the mentoring that came from a place that my mentor sent me to was fantastic, and I didn't really realise it until about 10 years after mm. when I went into teaching myself, and then I ended handing, handing over the Raka every now and then now, it's like, you know, to you and um, having um, mm. shared a little bit of time with you as a teacher, mm. you know, yeah. well, it's such valuable experience. And if it can happen naturally, and um, then the more good for it. Mentorship, like the, uh, what came from uh, Manos and Kali, has been very important to the, uh, the teammate. Um, um, group yeah. of artists in the north, and I think that they um, they 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 probably tried to second guess what Manos and Colleen might want them to do. <laughs> but you know, the thing was that they they knew what they had to do, and mm. they knew that they had to just get on with it and do it and make sure mm. it continued. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I think you make a really powerful point, Quitter, about mentorship. And um, seeing seeing what the power of what that does, and uh, and being part of that um, exchange because before you know it, um, you're you're mentoring the next person, and that's its that's its role, that's yeah. its fucker papa, I suppose, yeah. in action. Yeah. Well, you 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 also came to us, Nigel, from Pucky and mm. uh, Peter Peter Boyd, eh? You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you came into the program with um with the Matodana from 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 a commitment you made or they yeah. made to pull you in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's been it's having not too many masters or too many mentors to make good on, but yeah, it's it's a privileged position nonetheless. Yeah, and I think it's it's important for people to know that I stand in there in that that slide. On behalf of a range of people that have had the the lucky um, fortune to be taught by Kura or to be mentored in that way, so mm -hmm. um, this fucker papa teaching is to highlight that this occurs has has occurred in a range of different ways for so many people. I just want to also touch on you just mentioned it, Kura, which is perfect timing. Is our heroes of education and a fucker papa of teaching and mentoring. And of course, Manos Nathan and Colleen Ehrlich and their um, support and their mobilization of TMAC, the mm -hmm. Toy 
Taitokere Māori Artists Collective has been such a strong example in recent years. You know, it's gone from strength to strength and we've seen its development and its succession planning, but also its ability to achieve and to implement with ease. Um, I'm sure it's not always with ease, but they make <laughs> it look like it's with ease, which is all part of the, the challenge for us all. Um, the initiatives, the ideas and the aspirations that uh, Manos and Co Colleen had for Team Mac and continue to deliver. So I, I think it's important that when we think about Ngāpuhi initiatives and momentum, that Team Mac is a, a beautiful example of a group that, that does that. And I think just also it would be remiss of us not to think about Northland Polytech, um, tertiary arts education, and people such as Alan Wihongi, uh, Manos Nathan, and for a time, Hemi McGregor made, you know, such strong contributions to that goal and that aim of developing um, Māori arts within the North for both our Ngāpui artists and our Māori artists in general of the region. So there is that whakapapa there that is extremely strong and important as well. Yeah, because uh, at the um, Polytechnic there, they keep their doors open to uh, past students and any initiatives that are going on around the north. Mm. So, you know, the kilns, for instance, are there for the uh, oku people to work with. Mm. And uh, it, it's just it's just a natural relationship that um, the arts department has anyway with with its arts community. Yeah, it's and, good. Um, yeah, yeah, important, eh? Hey? Important, yeah. Yeah. I think also important for me, um, putting my curator Māori hat on is, um, you know, how can we, how can we um, support, maintain. Um, give momentum to visibility of contemporary Māori art today. So it's one thing for our mentors to, to teach, um, and it's such an important role to teach and to pass on and to instill in others the um, the passion for visual arts and for mātauranga Māori within the arts. But there's also a role there to play in how those artists then get to participate in the project that is contemporary New Zealand art. And where is their visibility? How are they allowed into the story of what is New Zealand art and mm -hmm. take their rightful place in institutions such as Te Papa, such as the Auckland Art Gallery, such as, um, you know, civic civic institutions that are meant to be there to represent the mm -hmm. art forms of New Zealanders. And we all know that history can be quite fraught and very unbalanced and very biased for Māori. So, um Rest, rest assured, I know what the challenges are, but at the same time, that doesn't mean to say that those challenges don't need to be met. And so what I'm really driving at is, um, you know, with a big uh, survey show of contemporary Māori art that we have coming up at the Auckland Art Gallery, opening at the end of this year in December, um, it's a chance to check in with contemporary Māori art. It's been 20 years since any survey show has explored the importance of contemporary Māori art and just checked in with who's coming through. Who are the new artists? Where, what do the, what's important to them? Where do they reside? How come I don't see them at the Auckland Art Gallery? How come I don't see them represented in other regional art collections? And I think part of that is the momentum and the visibility of contemporary Māori art needing to take back its rightful place within our New Zealand art story. And hopefully exhibitions such as this bring attention to the importance of contemporary Māori art, to the longevity of it and such the, the rich history of it. And um, perhaps hopefully reminds ourselves about its place and its importance. And it's not till, again, it's not till we lift our heads up and look a bit above our day to day that we actually allow ourselves to celebrate the bigger picture. So I think, you know, um, hopefully this exhibition and the idea of this, this conversation today is in the vein of us seeing ourselves and celebrating what it is that we uh, contribute to this, this broader movement of being Māori, of visual arts, 
of Matauranga Māori in the arts, but also um, as being tangata whenua to this country. Mm -hmm. Our art is distinctly different to everyone else's. And there's no apology attached to that. There is no um, disclaimer attached to that. There's only pride and a uh, pride of place attached to that. And hopefully an exhibition like this can um, can just reinvigorate our position and how we see ourselves within that art history of New Zealand. Um, I'm not going to go on too much more about that one because, that, <laughs> yeah, there's, that, there's, that's a talk for another day. But the, I just lastly wanted to think, um, when we think about the future, I want us all just to think into these propositions that I put forward to you here in this slide. And I think we're in a really interesting moment at, the, at this, this moment in time in the north where I see, I see, I see momentum um, and I see um, development taking place in a range of different pockets and in a range of different ways. So I want to pose, when we think about heroes of today and tomorrow, I want to pose what might the future hold for Ngāpuhi arts and artists and how do we fo foster the next heroes? So, you know, I have a set of propositions. Um, how, can, how can this be harnessed or these groups that we see represented here be harnessed to help forward a cohesive agenda for Ngāpuhi and Ngāpuhi artists. And the different players I'm talking about in the far north are the Whangarei Arts Museum, uh, the Provincial Development Growth Fund, uh, Hihioa Cultural Centre, the Wairau Māori Art Gallery, North Tech, Toi Ngāpuhi, Te Atinga, the Visual, Māori Visual Arts Committee of Toi Māori Aotearoa, and Creative New Zealand. And I think we don't have to have the answers to these to these questions today, but we do need to be thinking into that space about how can they best serve us and how can we harness these different elements to present a really powerful and cohesive future for Ngāpuhi artists. And how can they better reflect the community that they sit within? I think that's an urgent question as well. But also how can Māori artists benefit from them most? And so I realise I've just sent a whole lot of loaded questions down, down the barrel of the internet for you to think about. But at the same time, it's really to get us, it's really to inject us into that space of thinking. These, these are on the landscape. They have resources. They have, in a broader sense, a, um, a familiar and similar kaupapa of achievement, which is about Māori visual arts and culture. How can we, how can they be talking to each other better to achieve um, traction for the um, development of Māori artists and artists in the North? And I know Kura is very passionate and connected to these conversations too, so I'm keen to to hear your thoughts on that, Kura. Well, of course, the um, leading up to what we have in front of us now, with the um, wide art galleries on its way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the Hihiawa Cultural Centre is on its way now to um, what the tertiary provide um, is up north uh, is an area where I would hope a lot of discussion is happening between the um, tertiary institutions serving the north. Um, I think that it's important that um, the coming together of um, um, the uh, organisations that are set up to support the artist is done. And um, the initiative of Toi Ngāpuhi is, um, is, is really uh, urgent. Well, uh, we're, we've um, motored along um, to where we're at today in a very short time because there was a need, there is a need for it and um, it is artist led you know all the way through mm -hmm. this conversation we've talked about the artist leading the kaupapa and that's why it can happen is if the artists take the responsibility to own it mm -hmm. um, then um, we've got more chance of 
just focusing on, you know, going in the in the directions that we need to go in. Mm. And also I think that once we own the kaupapa that we've got in front of us, our it, it benefits our marae, our hapu and our iwi. And uh, we take the ownership because only we can do it. Mm. You know, we've tried the we've tried working in and being a consultation process, but it's it's kind of getting ourselves to a stage where we have the confidence yeah. to um, uh, progress it. So it's yeah. um, I'm, I'm talking probably a very sp- broad um, term, but uh, terms. But it's it's from my experience, this whole movement. Has is um, has been my life, and yeah. I've owned it. I think I've owned it, and yeah. um, I think that in owning it, the endeavour is to give it back to the yeah. or give back to our marae, to our fano, to our hapu, and to our iwi. Yeah. And um, you know, I think artists have. Um, as creative thinkers, we can think around uh, a box in in lots of ways, you know, so we can come at things at different angles and achieve what we want to do as a collective or as uh, as collective groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, when you look at the role that you have in the um, public space, mm-hmm. it's um, really you are reflecting back to, yeah. to us what what we have um, yeah. in, you know, that's uh, uh, the gift, the yeah. koha, uh, yeah. the koha. Yeah. From, uh, so, it's, um, so it's important that we, we try not to complicate it. We know what we want. <laughs> right? We know what we want. Now we've got the level of expertise to do it. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I have my new fuddy hoi up in, uh, in the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think um, you know, sometimes it's about recognizing moments, and I feel like we're there. We're, we're at a, we're close to a moment in the north uh, with momentum and with, with, with um, different um, um, institutions on the, on the landscape or in the landscape. And, um, mm-hmm. I suppose the coordinator in me is thinking, oh man, here's potential here. How can we harness this? And how yeah. can this moment, how can we make the most of this moment um, mm-hmm. for artists and for, for the future of um, Taitokero Māori Arts development? And um, yeah, I just think that's an exciting proposition to me. And, and it's not a daunting one. It's one, it's, it's a little bit of homework for everybody, but I think, I think it's very achievable and I think it's very exciting to think about what that future might look like. Um, and and the good and the good robust conversations that need to take place for us yeah. to get to that point. I, I think one of the things we had in front of us that we, we saw our diversity maybe is um is is an issue. But really, yeah. the diversity is 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 Strange. not that at all. You know, oh, the diversity yeah. is is our um, is our strength. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's really important now that we turn our fakaro around and we go. We are yeah. a strength because yeah. we are diverse. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. You know, and so it's everything becomes sort of like, oh, good, we can do this over in Hokianga, yeah. or, or Hokianga, we can do this, or yeah. you know, or the weavers can start weaving us all together. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I have to agree. I think if we see it as limitless, then the world's our oyster, like you, you like to point out. So I feel mm-hmm. that that's the case. Um, uh, the strength of our diversity is is the limitless nature of the future that we can that we can obtain and that we can see for ourselves that we want to see for ourselves so i'm very conscious that i didn't mention the weavers and all of this i um i think that uh, from the 70s you know there there was a big movement of weavers in the north um they coincided with the um 
union movement <laughs> and um, the uh, what do you call it? the MOA, um, which was a Māori organisation on human rights yeah, in yeah. the 70s. And so uh, Sana Mari and Auntie Sana and well, Nani Sana and mm -hmm. weavers right up in the Ahipara there were weaving mm -hmm. away and, mm -hmm. you know, weaving these stories together and, mm -hmm. and there's been a big growth, especially for tertiary provide and mm -hmm. um, enlivening and keeping it uh, woke, mm -hmm. keeping it up, you know, in terms of the raranga and uh, leadership um, mm -hmm. in the north uh, is very strong amongst mm -hmm. our kaida raranga. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, anyway, um, there's lots of quarter or two be happening, and I'm very uh, invigorated or energised by the conversation that we've opened, or mm. that we've um, that we can um, continue with, mm. especially in the north. And I think, yeah, we do need to honour our heroes past and present, and uh, every now and then, not all the time, but, you know, <laughs> um, keep them pono <laughs> <laughs> and on to it and making sure that we do what we're, we're here to do and to uh, enrich or no, see how our people can enrich them, themselves in, in this whole um, mm. In mm. our choice, you know. Mm. So, but um, do we have anything else that we'd like to? Because we could. Uh, mm. I think you covered it well, there, Kura. I think that's that's our future. We've we've turned the waka from, you know, looking looking at the contents of our waka and the past to the future, and um, I think we're in good shape and in good health and. I, I really encourage and look forward to more more conversations about how we how we row our way through the future with um with arts development in the north. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just need to, I think we are doing it now. I think we've seen what we um are capable of doing. Mm. And um we have a lot behind us for that to be done. Yeah. Uh, the expertise as well as the movers and the shakers um, mm. and the makers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you think about our heroes, our heroes are the kai, kai hoi on that waka. They're the ones that have been rowing the yeah. waka and um, we all get a chance to row that waka. So, you know, please feel that you're part of that that conversation. We talk about heroes and, and um, being heroic is actually, that's something that, we're all obliged to do and be at some point in time. So that includes you. <laughs> and um, so, Nigel, I'll, I will just round up on the conversation for today and um, for the Wahanga Tua Fa or Tui Ngāpuhi. And, um, you know, I know that uh, I don't need to thank you, but to... Um, acknowledge that like, we're, we're moving forward in the waka mm. and that um, we have a lot to do and it's all exciting and I hand it over to Bruna. Thank you very <laughs> much Nigel. Kia ora kura. Hi, tēnā koe e, e Nigel uh, tēnā hoki kaua e kura um Nigel, that was uh, a really delightful uh, walk down memory lane. As you were presenting, uh, I was reminded of um, uh, one of our aunties from the Kahu Valley, a um, mm -hmm. woman by the name of Eileen Patuawa Netana, uh, as a contemporary painter and poet. Uh, and also, I'm lucky enough today to be hosted by uh, the people of Te Uri Tanifa and Ngāti Haneira, uh, of course, close to um, our relative Shane Cotton's people. Mm -hmm. um, but also, 
of Te Uri Tanifa Ngāti Haneira, um, Ngāi Te Waka Ki Tua Whenua, uh, Ngāti Rangi, um, a person I'm reminded of as well as uh, John Miller, a photographer yeah. who's yeah. Um, photographed um, a- and recorded documentary um, evidence of all Kura's uh, exploits with her <laughs> Ngā Tamatoa um, <laughs> colleagues. Uh, John Miller, of course, has uh, contributed hugely to um, contemporary art. Um, and only a, a hop, step and a jump from where we are in Waimata here is, of course, Te Pua, Te Whike and Kaikohe. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Fred Muru Painga, uh, mm. that we all know is uh, affectionately a sow in Muru, um, still affectionately remembered for his contribution to um, contemporary mm. art. Mm. But I suppose, um, uh, Nigel, what I'd like to, to round off is what you've talked about is the continuum with Kura. And um, think, of course, of uh, Muru Walters. I think about his, uh, his uncle, um, the Archdeacon Sir King Ihaka, uh, whose contribution to contemporary music and art, mm. the combination of the honouring of our heritage uh, and creating uh, contemporary expressions of that is uh, undeniable. Of course, Muru's grandson, now Matthew, uh, is in 660 and leading oh, in contemporary chair. Um, pop music. You know, so... Those continuums uh, and influences are all around us. Uh, no reira. Uh, tēne ka mihi atu ki a koe e Nigel. Um, he, he uri whakaheke tau. Tau no hokianga, uh, no te huhu, no ngākahu whero, no pāpahia, uh, no tō tau uh, tūpuna uh, whakarongo uru. Mm-hmm. Uh, no oh, reira ka mihi atu ke ako. Tēnā koe ko, ko rahi uh, i, uh, i a mātou i, i au ake kōrero. Kaurua tahi e te tuahine e kura. Uh, kore ngā mihi mihi uh, e mimiti uh, tēnei rangi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what a conclusion to this, this series of uh, webinars. Uh, the reminder of um, those ones who uh, have been heroes in their lifetime and all, also those who, heroes who are still amongst us. And thank you for reminding us of those ones and inspiring perhaps a new generation to take up the reins uh, mm. and the inspiration from their mentors and those ones who guide them. And Te nana hoki koutou ko mutu tēnei wahanga a i a mātou o toi ngā puhi. A, ka mihi atu ki ngā kai kōrero o te rangi nei. A, ka mihi atu ki au koutou i roto i ngā kāinga e hakarongo mai nei e mātakitaki mai nei. O reira ki a tau ngā mana ki tanga o te runga rawa ki tēnei tohu tanga o tātou i te rangi nei. Ka einu e tātou ki te ingo te matua te tamaiti me te wairu a tapu. Amen. Gloria ki te ingoa te matua te tamaiti me te wairua tapu e pera hoki te timatanga pera no aini, pera tonu ake, ake, ake. Amen. E o matana mātou ki a koe e te whaia tapu o te atua hei piringa mo mātou, a ua haka kino mai ki a mātou i noa i o mātou mate, e ngari whaka aurangi a mātou e ngā mea whaka matuku katoa e te taka kau i whaka gloria tia, ae e whaka paengia. Amen. Tengo te matua, te maiti me te wairu a tapu. Amen. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora hui hui mai anō rā tātou katoa. Kia ora.